Yes then YouTube, happy one year anniversary to Uno Emery. So in today's video, guess what we are going to talk about? Yes, you guessed it, Uno Emery. But first, drop this video a like for me, drop a comment down below and please hit that subscribe button to my channel, that would mean the world to me. Also, I'm proudly sponsored by Luke Roper, as you can see in the top left of your screen. Please do check out Luke's website, link is down in the description below. Luke1977.com, use the code WOLF20 at the checkout for 20% off your whole order including sale items. So then, one year of Unai Emery. And I remember sitting in that bed, watching Aston Villa on that telly as we got absolutely battered by Fulham at Craven Cottage 3-0. Fulham at the time had just been promoted and I was thinking, we're, not only are we in a battle to stay up, I really think we're going to get relegated. That, that was honestly what was going through my head at that game. Of course, Gerard then subsequently got sacked Probably not even 10, 15 minutes after the full-time whistle had gone. And I remember when he got sacked and I was... Uno Emery and Pochettino were like my dream two. They were my two dream managers. But I didn't think they would come to Aston Villa. I didn't. I, I thought they would hold out for better jobs. Especially with the perceived mess that we were in at that time. And we were in an absolute mess, YouTube, weren't we, at, at that point. We were just... Wow, we looked awful. I, I remember thinking Sean Dyche. I mean... I remember seriously contemplating, get Sean Dyche in, keep us in, keep us in the Premier League for just last season, just keep us up and then we can reassess this summer. Well, so we're Iris and Edens, they did their magic, Uno Emery walks through the door and as they say, the rest is history. And I just want to put this video out there because let's talk about Uno Emery. Now, Uno Emery is a manager that... For some reason in this country, although I have now noticed a bit of a change over the last couple of weeks as we are pretty much, you can't really ignore how well we're doing now at Aston Villa, right? Uno Emery seems to still be that manager that doesn't really get the credit he deserves, in my opinion. Now, I think he did an all right, I think he did a bad to all right job at Arsenal. Probably rightly sacked, but I think with the Arsenal job, and of course not being an Arsenal fan or anything like that, I think whoever was going to step in after Arsene Wenger after that many years at the club. I think they were going to struggle, no matter who. Kind of like with David Moyes and Fergie. Whoever was going to replace Fergie and Arsene Wenger, they were going to be shocking. You kind of want to be the person that follows that person. You know, like Arteta or Van Gaal, although Van Gaal did a pretty bad job at United. But you kind of want to be that guy. You don't want to be the guy that replaces the guy. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that replaces the guy who replaced the guy. You know? And I really think that time at Arsenal has stuck, especially in the media. Now, don't get me wrong. De Zerbi and Brighton, they are a very good team. The way De Zerbi plays football, very pleasing on the eye. Uno Emery has actually got quite a much better record than De Zerbi now at Aston Villa. Yet all you seem to hear is oh, how great De Zerbi is. I don't then forget as well, Uno Emery has beaten De Zerbi three times out of three as well in that time. And I don't mean to like slate De Zerbi or anything, but I'm just saying how the media perceive... Robert, Roberto De Zerbi, uh, compared to how they perceive Uno Emery, is actually pretty pretty mad when you consider the records of both clubs. Now, I'm going to show you something straight away here. This is Uno Emery's record at Aston Villa so far. So, this season, in the Premier League, we are running at 2.11 points per game, which is an absolute mad, mad, mad record. And I mean, like, a mad, mad, mad record. In the Conference League, played... Oh no, we've only, we haven't played. Oh no, that was the qualifiers. We played one, lost one. Now, if you look at his points per game, uh, I thought it was higher than that. I thought it was like a 2.1. Oh, that's... Um, maybe that's going over... Okay, interesting. 1.88 points per game. If you look at his record as a manager, I don't really include these two here because these are like first coming in. I take Uno Emery's managerial record from Valencia onwards. That's when he started becoming really, really, really well known. His lowest points per game total is 1.5. Now, if Uno Emery was to have a 1.5 points per game record with us, Aston Villa, across the Premier League season, we would finish on 57 points, which would give you a really good chance of European football every single season. Maybe some season it'll get you Conference League. Maybe some seasons it'll get you Europa League. But it'll, it'll give you a really good chance of uh, Europa, uh, European football in the Premier League. Now... Uno Emery at Aston Villa is running at... I thought he was running at about two points per game pretty much over the whole time he's been here. But if we then look at the Premier League table now, nine games in, six wins, one draw. Who was the draw against? Oh, Wolves away, yep. Yeah. And two losses. The two defeats are 
in my opinion, against the two toughest grounds to go to in the Premier League. That is away at St. James's Park and away at Anfield. I think them two, and maybe Man City at the Etihad, I think them three are the toughest three places to go in the Premier League. Not many teams are going to go to them three grounds and win at all. So I don't really mind the losses. I did think the performance... The performances in those games were a little bit alarming, though. I will say that. But I think with the Newcastle game, first game of the season, Buendia picking up an ACL injury on the Thursday, he would have been in the team 100%. And then Mings picking up an ACL injury when it was 1-1 in the game. You can kind of say maybe at that point, you know, just... Maybe at that point, the Mings injury was down to that performance in the, the Newcastle game. The Liverpool game, though, was just shocking. We just didn't turn up at all. But considering the teams that we've played in the nine games, we have played, off the top of my head here, we have played Newcastle, Liverpool, Brighton, West Ham, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, Wolves, Everton, Burnley. That is the nine teams we have played. Now, we've played some good teams in there. We have, we've only played one of the promoted teams. And if you're looking at the promoted teams at the minute, we actually do play Luton on Sunday as this video does go out. We've only played one of the promoted teams, and the promoted teams do look pretty, pretty poor this season. So we haven't had, we haven't played three of them yet in the nine games. I think our start has been pretty tough, considering, especially we've played away at Liverpool, away at Newcastle, and away at Chelsea. We've already played three teams away from home who you'd expect to be challenging in them top seven, top eight places, right? Chelsea, maybe not. You don't really know how they're going to get on this season, but I think our, our start has been. Quite, quite, quite challenging, especially which is a really underrated factor, which I did want to speak about in this video. Not many people are talking about this outside of Villa because obviously they probably don't know. We are missing four players who are guaranteed starters for us. And I mean guaranteed starters. Ramsey would play every single minute of every single game for us. He still has only played, what, 30 minutes all season for us and he did actually score against Brighton. Moreno, he would play every single game at left back because he, he suits our team and the way that we play under Una Emery better than Luca Dean. But I will give Luca Dean some credit. He has actually been really, really, really good this season. So fair play to him. Tyro Mings, he would play every single game for us. He would. Although, I will say this, actually. The signing of Pau Torres. I, and let me know if you agree with this in the comment section down below YouTube. I don't actually think we've missed Tyro Mings that much. And I think the reason that we haven't missed him is because of the signing of Pau Torres. I think we've really had a good signing in Pau Torres. He's a very good player. I think he'll get better as the season goes on as well. And then Emi Buendia, I think, would have played 90% of the games. I really do. But um, he's not... Uh, I don't love him as much as most Villa fans. I think he's... I think he, I just, I don't think he's been the player that I expected us to sign. I don't think he's hit them heights, but I like him. I think he is a very good player and Uno Emery likes him as well. He would have played a lot, a lot, a lot of football for us. Them four players missing all at the same time. He's so big. And the fact that we are in fifth, to, well, I don't even know how many points are we on? The fact that we're on 19 points, only two points off Man City in that. With them injuries that we've had. It's absolute testament to Uno Emery. And I'm sick of this narrative that hits the media about how Uno Emery is this negative manager. You know, he's boring. He plays negative football. I'm telling you right now, at Aston Villa, that couldn't be further away from the truth. We are, I've never seen football like this at Aston Villa. It is so methodical, so thought out. Every single time we go into a game, I'm thinking we've got the better manager. Unless, of course, we play Man City and stuff like that. And... Liverpool, I kind of don't think we have the better manager at that point. But every game we're going into the game, and I'm thinking, I know I know it's played with the players on the pitch, but we have the better manager, so I backed us to win the game. Against Wolves, we have the better manager. I backed us to win the game. We actually didn't win the game. We only drew 1-1. It is what it is. Against West Ham, I think Uno Emery is a better manager than West Ham, and I think we've got a better team than West Ham. Even though our record against West Ham has been absolutely shocking. And I mean shocking, shocking, shocking. It has been absolutely abysmal. I still backed us to win the game, and we did. We did win the game, although I did kind of back us to draw. But the way I'm now looking at football, I think Uno Emery has given us a lesson as Aston Villa fans. He really has. I remember his first few games in charge when we were trying to play out from the back. There were a lot of groans and murmurings from the Villa fans. You go to Villa Park now, there are none of that. When we start playing out from the back, Uno Emery has earned, earned the trust and the respect from the Villa fans in terms of we know now 
with the result, the results kind of speak for themselves. If we play the way that Unai Emery wants to play, and that, of course, is playing out from the back, playing into Douglas Luiz and into Kamara, who will then, in turn, get the ball into the narrow number 10s, blah, blah, blah. If we play that way, we win a lot more games than we're going to lose. It will work. There might be the odd game where it doesn't work. You know, Wolves away, the, it, it didn't work, and it didn't. Although, in the end, actually, when they got the red card, we battered them for them last 15 minutes of extra time. Probably should have won it in the end. Ollie Watkins was literally about an inch away from winning that game. And if we'd have won that game, wow, we would have been on 20. What we'd have been flying. Like, wow, we. But I just don't understand the narrative in the mainstream media around Uno Emery YouTube. I, I don't get it. And let me know in the comment section down below whether you agree with what I'm saying here. But there seems to still be this narrative that he's not that good a manager and he's just not this and he's not that. And that. Aston Villa is kind of his level. I don't uh, because if Aston Villa is his level, well, we need uh, us as Aston Villa. We need to get to his level then, because Una Emery has already dragged Aston Villa from a guaranteed relegation scrap under Steven Gerrard, and I probably would have even backed us to have got relegated last season. There was no way in hell. The the longer Steven Gerrard was here, the more and more and more I was I was just questioning and baffling. What on earth is this bloke doing? Because he is shocking. But. We'd have been in a relegation battle last season. He took us over. We were 16th in the league. We finished 7th. Remember how many plaudits Brighton got last season? We finished one point behind Brighton. One point. And that is us giving, what, an 11-game head start to Brighton as well? I think we had an 11-game... Brighton had an 11-game head start on us because, of course, we had Steven Gerrard for that time. But I think we really need to start putting some respect... On Uno Emery's name, I really do. Not us Villa fans, I'm talking about the mainstream media. Us Villa fans absolutely love and adore him. I, I've never, as a Villa fan, I'm only 27 years old. The last 10, 15 years have probably been the worst in Aston Villa's history, right? So we haven't had a good time in the last 10, 15 years at all. I'm now going to Villa Park, 11 home wins on the bounce. I'm expecting, to, I'm, I'm borderline just, oh, we'll win. We'll win. I know, even if, even if, we're playing, I don't know, who have we, we've got Luton at home on Sunday, on my birthday, actually. I'll back us to win that game, of course, I do. we're playing Luton. We've actually got a nice run of fixtures coming up, but say we play Man City at home, I'm on borderline, like, we, we can win. We can. I don't expect us to win, of course, when we play Man City, but I'm like, we can win. We could, you know. We could win. We've won, like, 11, home, 11 wins in a row at home in the Premier League. That's like, that is literally Man City level. That is Bayern Munich level. That's the levels that we're talking about. Give Uno Emery the keys to the castle, honestly. Let's talk about Uno Emery and let's start putting him in that topic of conversation of the elite managers because I firmly believe he is an elite manager and that is where I'm going to end the video. He's elite. He is. Thank you for watching YouTube. Please drop this video a like for me. Drop a comment down below and hit that subscribe button to my channel. That would mean the world to me. Thank you for watching. Remember, spread the love and positivity. PMA Positive Man Latitude. Peace out. One love. Up the villa.